I'm going to try and demo how to link a REPLIT Python program or any of your REPLs with a GitHub um, repo. Okay, so I'm going to make a really simple little REPLIT that just says hello world here. I can't, hello world. Okay, very boring. Click run and it should say hello world. So nothing exciting there. What GitHub uh, or Git particularly allows you to do is track revisions that you've made to your code so you can um, keep track of any changes you've made particularly helpful if you're working in a group and you're getting multiple people working on the same um, project okay it's called version control and git is one of the most popular ones i'm not an expert so i will probably be um, making mistakes as i'm talking through this but it's kind of cool so i wanted to show it to you so uh, if you go to git in Replit on the left hand side, open that tool up, you'll see a little tree that says initialize Git repository. And at the moment, this is just local to Replit. It isn't going out to this thing called GitHub. Um, and basically, anytime you make a change to your program, if I say print goodbye world, our world, and then perhaps I make a new file called readme.md, which stands for markdown, and I put a title saying test readme, and then hello everyone. Okay, so readme is quite useful for when we actually see it on GitHub, it tells people about your project. Now, what you'll see is if you kind of wait a little bit on the left hand side, there we go, it is tracking what you've changed. So what you should do is every time you've done a, a load of work, you kind of put a little message saying updated uh, Python, uh, for example, and then you can choose to commit it. So that gives it a little message. You can go on and say also added readme. Okay. <laughs> and then you say stage and commit all changes and you will see a list of all the changes that you've made. And again, it tells you who made the change. So if you've got multiple users, you can see who did it. So it's all well and good. This is just going to be stored um, in the versioning within Replit. Now, what gets even better is if you have an account on, or uh, is my account on github.com it's free it's got a list of all my like projects that i've been working on and you can even see a little diary as to when i've been making them now if i go to my repositories or repos as they're called you can see all the repositories that i've been working on in different languages and stuff like that um notice there's not one called test replit to github demo so for that if i go up to uh not where it says git but I go to the little wheel here, uh, I've got a little drop down that says GitHub. Okay, there are other versioning systems out there, but GitHub is the only one I know. So if I just leave the repository name the same as my GitHub name, sorry, my Replit name, and leave the description uh, as, as such, you can't have private repos, I believe, if you've got the free account. So I'm just going to leave it as public. And if I click Create Repository on GitHub, if, sometimes I get errors, <laughs> but this one I didn't. Um, if you get a remote URL, it shows it's created it for you. It's kind of annoyingly, this button is still there <laughs> when it shouldn't be, um, but I'm just going to ignore that. So if I now go back to my repositories and press refresh, you can see it's created the, it's created the um, repo. But when I click on it, there's nothing in here. So this is what it says. It like, talks about how you can create new repositories on the command line and all sorts of scary stuff. But there are no files there. The files have not been pushed to this remote account. So what you have to do is there isn't yet a nice way of doing it from here. You have to do it via the shell. And through a lot of pain and suffering, this is what you need to type in. Git push and then dash dash set slash upstream origin main. Notice where the spaces are, okay? I'm still not entirely sure what this means, but basically it kickstarts the first push and actually pushes the files up. Then it asks to pass your GitHub repository, uh, to pass your credentials, okay? So uh, I'm going to say confirm. 
I think originally uh, when I first authenticated it, it did some kind of tokens and credentials. I can't remember it was so long ago, but something seems to have happened. It looks like it's written some objects there. It's created a branch. If I now go back to my empty uh, GitHub um, repo and press and just do refresh. There we go. It's got my files. It's got my readme. It's got my main.py in there. OK, very exciting. Very exciting. If I now go back here and make a change, so I will tell you what, just copy and paste those two lines and paste them again, and maybe have a look at my README. Um, I'll do a subheading. Also add pictures. I do love a bit of markdown, but that's it. Now, what you'll see when you go back to that Git, you don't have to do any more command lines. So that one um, line I wrote is it you should find when you go back to git and wait a little bit for some reason it takes a little bit of time if i just kind of collapse that down it should la 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 it should pick up the fact that i've been making changes now i'm never entirely sure whether this is going to work so let's do a little bit more markdown you can also put paste links into markdown if i do preview this is what it will look like um, we are just waiting for, I just, let's just close git down, close shell down and open up git again. Because I, there we go. See, I told you sometimes it takes some time. It's now uh, detected that I've changed main.py because obviously I copied and pasted a couple more lines and it also knows I've been messing around in readme. So be patient, it will appear. So this is exactly the same as I had before. So if I say my summary to commit, I'm going to say added extra print lines. OK, and then I can do control and enter and it will commit it. Why did that not work? Uh, OK, it should work. Oh, I'll put a description. Uh, nothing. All right. Then when I'm ready, if I can now do stage and commit all changes, it should. There we go. It's got added extra print lines. But now it's got this extra thing. It's got this push, which we didn't have before, because this will push it to the remote um, GitHub here. So if we look and I just check that this is still the old. Um, this is still the old uh, uh, main.py. But if I press this push button, Pushing, pushing, there we go, it's done. And now if I refresh this, you'll see that my changes are now stored safely in GitHub. Okay, and also if I just go back up to readme. There we go, it's got the, the link as well that I was demoing and the subheading. What I wanted to show you, particularly on GitHub, one of the um, good things about it is you can actually see what has been changed between versions, which you can't really see on Repolit, but GitHub does show it really nicely. So if I look at main.py, which had a few changes and I click on it, I can see what my current state of main.py is. But if I look at um, the history up here, it will have all the different commits that um, it occurred. And I can look at, say, added extra print lines, which was the latest commit. And it will show me changes that I've made, particularly between each one. So I can look at the fact that I added those two lines there. I can, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to cancel. I can look at the fact that um, I have added various bits along the way on there on README. So it does show that on each commit, you can actually see what has been changed. While we're at it, I thought we might actually look at um, how you can pull down changes from GitHub to Repolit. So you can actually edit things very basically within GitHub itself. So if I make a little message saying this is from Repolit, sorry, getting confused, GitHub, um, and then just commit changes. Um, I'm going to say update from GitHub. Okay, so can you see this is very similar to what we were seeing in the Repolit commit box? You know, you have a message and you have a, a description. So uh, I won't worry about branches just yet. Uh, let's keep it simple. And if I click commit changes, it's there. Now it's slightly, oh, it has updated it now. 
I, when I tested this before, I hadn't updated it, but you can see now that the main branch actually has that word, those words, this is from GitHub. But if I go back to my REPL and just check my main.py, it's not there. It's because I haven't synchronized with the remote branch of this um, repo. So if I go, let's just go to Git as well. I'm going to close it down and reopen it just because it might give it a few minutes to find things. Um, it can see there's a commit to pull, but there's also a little refresh. So let's just refresh it. And it's, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. oh, it's just, it's just done it, I think. Um, it says three commits to pull. This might have been because I was testing this before I did the video. Let's do synchronize. So basically it's a pull, but a synchronize will do both a pull and a push. So let's just click synchronize. Okay. And look, lo and behold, that this is from GitHub is now here. And you can see, you can see I was messing about before, but there's my update from GitHub and, um, you know, information about when and where it was. Okay.